The most difficult, and therefore most interesting, part of the whole sawmilling process is the first cut. That's why I had to go back and rejigger this video a little bit. It's also the first thing, so I started with that, and I was trying to explain what I'm about to explain to you now at the same time as I was talking about what a chainsaw mill is and why I have an aluminum extension ladder laying around and all that other stuff. It was too much. Now that you've seen the later steps of the process that are fairly straightforward, this is going to make a lot more sense. First, you put your log somewhere or go to your log more likely. That's sort of the big advantage of a chainsaw mill as opposed to a conventional bandsaw mill is that it's portable. So if you don't have heavy equipment like I'm fortunate enough to have, you can go wherever your log is. You can cut a tree down, walk your chainsaw over to wherever it landed, and mill the lumber right there. That's the big advantage. In any case, I am lucky. I have a mini excavator, so I'm able to grab this log and put it here where it's convenient. Then there's a little bit of planning. The end goal is you want to get that ladder on top of this log straight. You know, if you just set it on here and you screw it down, it's not stiff enough. It'll, it'll follow the log and it'll sit up high on knots and it won't give you a true cut. So uh, I start at the small end and I have, this is just a cut piece of two by six pre-planing. So it is like 1.8 thick. It's the thickness that I am cutting with the chainsaw mill, not the final thickness of the board. And you don't need a, you could be cardboard, you could do this with a ruler and whatever, but it's painted to have a single piece. And I'm going to use this to locate, I want the first slab I take off of this to yield one two by six. Because if I wait until the first one that's going to give me two, it'll be way down here, I'll have a ton of waste. And I notice on this log that it actually hourglasses in a little bit. There's, there's some knots right by the end here. So it's actually thinner here than it is here. So I'm going to be pretty generous. And I'm going to put this, eh, let's put this there. I'm going to level it. Don't have to do a great job at this. Just get it in the ballpark. And I'm going to trace it. So I want my first slab to be that. I like to do the second cut first, if that makes any sense at all. I'm going to cut it here on the bottom. I found that if I try and cut it up at the top here, I just don't have enough. You're trying to screw into the bark. Screws don't hold and things move and you don't have enough to grab here if you're trying to set up your mill. Because you can't put a screw anywhere near your cut line or you risk hitting it with your chainsaw and dulling your chain and screwing everything up. So I set my mill to cut deeper and I cut the bottom cut here first. And then after that's done, I'll take this whole piece, I'll flip it over and I'll use the cut that I just made the way I use with the whole log, put the ladder straight on it and do the second cut. And that works really, really well. Now I want to know where the center of the useful part of this log is vertically. Honestly, I'm just gonna use the, the ring center here. Just take a look at the log. Sometimes this is way off to one side, really visibly not centered. This one's pretty concentric. This looks pretty good, so I'm gonna use that. And I need to know the distance between my first cut and the center of the log. So, it doesn't have to be super accurate. I'm four and three eighths up here. So, four and three eighths is the magic number. Now that we know that, we're gonna go to the other end. All right, this is the big end of the log. And this one, you can see the grain's a little more eccentric. So I'm gonna take a quick sanity check here to the edge of useful. We're like eight and an eighth. Okay, it's not bad, eight and a quarter. So I'm gonna use, again, center of the grain. It's my starting point. I'm gonna go up four and three eighths from there. Right there. That is the height of the first cut on this side of the log. Stretch that horizontal, roughly. You can just do the same thing. Put your template two by six here and mark the bottom. What'll happen then is that you end up with a, a strip of waste bark wood top and bottom of the log you can't use, right? It's just worthless. And you'll end up with your top one will be the same thickness on both ends and your bottom one will be thick on one end and thin on the other. What I'm doing here is I'm just splitting the difference so that both of them taper half as much and the grain through each of my slabs is a little bit straighter. It's a pretty marginal difference, but it's what I'm doing, so. The next step is to put some cleats on the end here. These are the first main reference points that are going to define where the ladder is going to sit. All right, these are some chunks of wood that I am using every time. And it's important to note that I only have two settings that I use for this project on my chainsaw mill. Almost every cut is done with the same setting, and that is the distance from the fence to the blade is the thickness of my ladder plus the thickness of the slab that I want, which is about 1.8. I have my mill marked, and I can reset it to that pretty accurately and get the same cuts every time, and every slab's the same thickness, and everything works great. For this cut, because as I said, I do the second cut first, I need to cut a lot deeper. Through trial and error, I've, I've arrived at the conclusion that I go about two and a half inches more than my normal cut. 
that number isn't important. What is, is that these used to be wider. I took some scrap wood that was wider than it needed to be, and I screwed it down several logs ago, and I set my chainsaw mill to the same dimension that I'm going to for this coming cut, and I cut these along with the logs. So this is the width that I'll be cutting. So I can take this and I can place it on the line and I know that my chain cut will be right at the bottom edge of this board. Now, could I just measure that with tape measure and put it in the right place? Yeah, just this is less work and quite reliable, so I like it. Let me just take this, put it on our line, screw it right into the log. So, why do we care if this is level, you ask? That's a great question. We don't. This could be at an angle, wouldn't hurt a thing. All that matters is that these two are parallel end to end so that the ladder doesn't have a twist in it and therefore your lumber doesn't have a twist in it. And it is much easier to set two things to level and then know that they're parallel than it is to set one thing cattywampus wherever it wants to be and then try and figure out how to make the other one match it. So set them level because it's easier. Back at the narrow end, we do the same thing. All right, we've established a datum. Top surface of this board and the top surface of that board are parallel because they're both level and they are equal height from the center of the log and they are offset from where we want the first cut by a known amount. Now we just need to get the ladder set up. Fixed to the bottom of the ladder are five scraps of two by four. Normally these sit right on the flat surface and give me something to run a screw through. For this exercise, first one goes right on the board that we set up. That establishes right where I want this ladder to go. The other ones, I've drilled and tapped two holes in each one so that I can run bolts down until they touch the uneven surface of the bark and I can set the height and angle of this ladder at each point along its length. In order to know where to set it, use a string line and a level. So I run the string under the rungs of the ladder but on top of the two by four blocks just because that's the only space that there's really clearance to do it. On this side, 2x4 on edge on top of our reference block. So on the other side, I have a scrap of 2x4 I've put under the string to elevate it so that they're both the same height from our datum. And then I have three pieces of quarter inch plywood that I use as check gauges. One of those is at each end here too. So 2x4 is an inch and a half thick and this is quarter inch plywood. The string is an inch and three quarters above the plane that we established at the beginning. The reason for the quarter inch plywood is because if this string was just touching the top of the 2x4, I would not be able to tell if the 2x4 was too high. I'd only be able to tell if it was too low. This allows me to have a, a gap between them that I can check. That I can slip this piece of plywood under and make sure it just barely goes. And if there's not enough room for the plywood, I know that the ladder needs to come down. And if there's too much room for the plywood, I know that the ladder needs to come up. So now that that's all set up, all I do is I go down to each board, put the level on it, and I run these two screws down until they're touching the log, and the string is a quarter inch above the top of the 2x4, and the level is level. And as I'm happy with each one, I screw it down and move on and set the next one. All right, the ladder's set up, fixed offset from the datum blocks we set on the ends of the log. It is level and straight, so it should create a good plane for our first cut. Chain is sharpened, oil tank is full, jig is adjusted to the right depth for this cut. So for the next 10 feet, the length of this ladder, this cut goes just like any other. Time to move the ladder. It's pretty straightforward. It's the same process as setting up in the first place. Pick up all the leveling screws, unscrew it, slide it to the end, and the string is still here. I'm gonna set it up the same way, level it the same way, and then finish the cut.
So there's a little complication. There's a high spot right here. And this, this two by four with the ladder on this side happens to land right on it. And so it's binding on the saw a little bit and the string is less than a quarter inch above that. So it needs to go down. I mean, there's a log in the way, but I think I'm gonna try and get away with Sawzall. I might be able to clearance that out a little ham-fistedly. We're gonna try it, see how it goes. Well, that went remarkably well, hence I'm remarking on it. Got clearance, string isn't touching, saw's not bound up. I can carry on leveling this out. So over here at the skinny end of the log, the curvature is tighter, so sometimes the bolts aren't long enough to touch, so I just stick block of scrap wood or something you got laying around under there, and that's fine. This is leveled out, straight on the string line, saw is started. At this point, I'm gonna remove the string because I don't want it to get tangled up in the chain when I exit the cut, and then I finish the first cut. All right, that's the first cut done. And other than the chainsaw eating my rope there at the end, went pretty good. Gonna break down the setup, pull out the leveling bolts from the ladder, reset the Alaskan sawmill back to the standard offset, which is two and a half inches less than the first cut. And then I'm gonna take this first piece that I've cut off here. It's not a slab yet, it's just a, I don't know what you call it, a shell. And I'm gonna flip it over and recut it. And that'll give me my first slab out of the bottom of it. That's it, first slab is cut. I'm gonna disassemble the ladder here, take the slab over to the ripping station, discard the edge piece, and then I got a log with a flat cut on it, and I can just start taking slabs off one at a time like you saw before. <laughs> 